get away! Kill him! Resident Evil. Hello, my name is Leon Hurley. I'm Associate Editor for OfficialPlaystationMagazine.co.uk. Hello, I'm Dave Michalm. I'm Acting News Editor for Official PlayStation Magazine UK. And uh, we're here to look at um, Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City, which Dave has played and reviewed. Dave, can you just uh, explain a little bit about what the, uh, the game actually is? Yes. Uh, Raccoon City isn't really a traditional Resident Evil in the survival horror sense. Indeed, it's more essentially a, a four-man squad shooter. Uh, it's primarily meant to be played online with only three people, uh, but you also can play it through on your own, although the companion AI is fairly poor. So much though that at certain parts of the game, though, I actually saw my teammates running into fire at several points, which was uh, good. Okay, so we saw just then the uh, the teammates are sort of a different bunch. Do they have sort of skills? Is there any sort of... Yeah, the, um, well, the, the kind of hook of it is um, you're all actually working for Umbrella, so you're essentially for the first time in the Resident Evil game that I can think of you're actually playing as the baddies uh, and cleverly it's kind of like in a pulp fiction style story where it weaves in between the events of Resident Evil 2 and 3 uh, from the original PlayStation which obviously took place in Raccoon City but um, in terms of each member's individual quirks they all essentially handle almost identically you can kit each one with out with whatever weapons you want each one is supposed to be like the, the munitions expert the explosion uh, the expo explosive expert, yeah. uh, you know, kind of the sniper, but in reality they all handle pretty much um, exactly the same. Although, uh, worth noting, this is obviously the first Resident Evil where you can actually move and shoot. Um, because the controls are very much like, I say, an Uncharted, where uh, the controls are actually one of the game's strengths, so you are, they really do feel quite athletic. You, you can sprint, you can even do, amazingly, for Resident Evil swan dives, which um, sometimes you really do have to do, because instead of traditional... Resident Evil combat where it will try and overwhelm you with kind of environment, kind of space management where you, you're getting boxed in rather than that. It's more to do with kind of overwhelming numbers so there's very little, you don't really have to kneecap people in this, it's all about more kind of straightforward shooting. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of the, the overwhelming numbers where it tries to get you. Okay, and you mentioned um, the previous games, what sort of part, what sort of um, bits of the story and, and older games does it sort of crisscross, what might people remember? Well, it's... Um, it's essentially entirely Resident Evil 2 and 3, although there was more of a focus on Resident Evil 2. Um, so without really spoiling anything, you, you do run into characters from both Resi 2 and Resi 3, so it'll really cl cutely, you'll be on the other side of things when, say like when Claire and Leon crash at the beginning of a cutscene in Resident Evil 2 where they almost get killed by a truck, you're then sent in to try and kill them. Or like the big boss of Resident Evil 2 who's called William Burke, and the actual opening mission has you trying to steal a G-Virus sample from him, and really cleverly, you're actually outside a room listening a, to a conversation which makes up a cutscene Resident Evil 2 and like the dialogues word for word. Oh, right. So there's a lot of like really nice stuff in there for <coughs> long-term fans of the series. <coughs> One of the nicest things is, um, because Resident Evil 2 and 3 take place basically within the same 24 hours, there's actually one mission where you have to go and find the Nemesis, which is obviously the big ultra mm. uber Terminator style baddie from uh, Resident Evil 3, and you've got basically got to reprogram him because his, his kind of brain's on the fritz and obviously because you're both working for Umbrella it's kind of cute um, cute reverse on things mm. but that's really what the game does best that's what I said in the written review that it's just all these nods to the PlayStation 1 games it's really such a thrill seeing classic locations from Raccoon City being beefed up and brought to life by PS3 you know locations you've only previously see, really seen as kind of still pre-rendered backgrounds and I think any any f long term fan of the series who's played the the PlayStation games will get a real kick out of that. Yeah, I mean, does it does it um, do the series sort of justice? Um, obviously, it's in terms of action, we can see it's a completely different sort of take on on the normal sort of shooting and um, even exploration sort of you'd normally get in a Resident Evil. Does it still sort of honour what makes the series good? Uh, in in parts, I mean, as I say, as you say, it's so um, it's so kind of difficult to marry this new combat system and these new mechanics with traditional scares so in that sense it's not scary um, but strangely I think where it does honour it is it's actually probably the, the plot I've enjoyed more of any Resident Evil since probably 3 just because it's very streamlined but because it's so annoying and it gives so many nods to the past games I actually it did make me want to keep playing um, so I think yeah, in essence it, it does kind of honour the series it's, it's clearly been made 
um, by people who you know love certainly Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3 and I think that's that's quite clear and the, how the game's been structured and designed so um, it, it doesn't quite stand up to the production values of like a Resident Evil 5 obviously because it's probably been made by on a much small budget I mean it's made by Slant 6 Games who mm. are actually a can Canadian developer who really don't have much to do with Capcom no. so they're, they're Sockham originally aren't they yeah, 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 it, it feels they're, like a it feels like a, a resi yeah. skinned Sockham yeah yeah that, that's essentially that's a pretty good way to describe it except it's obviously got more personality than that and does it I mean does it work I mean you obviously mentioned the AI uh, if you're playing it single player is not so great but in terms of the you know the shooting they look like there's yeah. a lot of bullets to go down there yeah that's that's the only that's a slight grievance at the start of the game um, until you upgrade your guns they do take a lot of bullets to down, which is a bit um, annoying, but it's when you beef when you beef up and get the better shotguns and assault rifles, improves considerably. And unfortunately, we're not seeing it here, but the actual combat against zombies and lickers and hunters is much much better than the, the combat against them. Um, the, the human force, um, just because it, there's a lot of tactical elements to fighting the zombies. You know, you can take them as human shields, and you know, you can you can actually shoot like human enemies to cause like a blood frenzy. So cool. It's, yeah, it's good. And uh, what did you give it out of 10 in the end? Uh, I give it a 7 out of 10, so it's uh, quite respectable. Cool.